Today we'll be talking about machine learning to classify soccer player positions. I'll be posting this code to the website, so I won't really do an in-depth analysis here. What I'm really trying to do is run you through the code and the process and bring the code to life. Why is this code even important? Well, the general purpose of this video is to help fantasy Premier League players to identify out of position players so that they can pick them and return more points. But I also want to kind of show the power of machine learning and how accurate it can be. I mean, we'll see if it is or not. So the video will be broken up into three parts. So first part is importing all the relevant packages, seeing the shape of the data kind of with using um, box plots and other graphs. Second part will be comparing and contrasting the different machine learning algorithms and picking the best one in terms of their accuracy. And after we pick it, we'll use that model. And the third part, the most exciting part, in my opinion, is using new data set and predicting um, on that data set with the model that we chose in um, the second part. So that might seem a bit confusing, but um, I'll run you through the process right now. So first part, like I said, we'll be importing all the relevant packages so that we can um, compute um, certain, um, use data frames and compute certain um, calculations with that and also use um, machine learning and import these machine learning algorithms that we'll use in the second part. So we'll be using the 2019 to 2020 data set from uh, the, the Premier League, obviously. And these are also um, using Premier, the fantasy Premier League statistics, like total points. So total points, obviously, if a, if a player scores or assists, they'll accumulate more points. And it's, it's just summing all those points they had last season. So I'll just show you the data frame here. You see, for example, Kevin De Bruyne, um, he's a midfielder, obviously, and um, 13 goals last season. So these are all the players. So 666 players, and we'll, we'll be using, um, we won't use to all 21 of the categories here, but we'll be using most of them. There's no null values, and this is just briefly looking at um, what the data looks like. And what I found out is that a lot of the data set, for example, total points and minutes are skewed to the right. So there's, um, you'll see this histogram here that a lot of the players don't play that much. So I thought it made more sense to um, kind of weed out players who do not play um, even 600 minutes last season, which isn't even a lot. And I thought this makes sense because I want to be training my model on players who play a lot, have a lot of statistics to show so that it will be more accurate rather than use a player with like, like zero minutes and zero goals, zero everything, like that wouldn't be useful in my data set. So I guess it really depends on um, what data you're working with. So yeah, when we look at, when we weed out these players, we see that it looks, the distribution looks much better. We, we have a lot of players who play um, a decent amount of minutes. And these are the um, um, relevant, I mean, the corresponding box plots where you see the minutes, it's almost like a normal distribution. We can see a quick scatter matrix to see the relationship between these variables that we chose. And like one of the things that I found interesting is that, you know, the influence of a player, which is quantified by like some data firm, um, it's almost like a one to one, a linear relationship with um, total points. So it doesn't mean they cause they cause each other, but I thought that was pretty interesting. For the second part of the analysis, we're going to be comparing and contrasting the different machine learning algorithms. So right now here, we're appending the different machine learning algorithms to this list, and we're running through this list and performing this stratified k-fold that will calculate this accuracy score to be able to compare these models. So logistic, logistic regression had the highest median along um, following LDA. We can see more closely what these accuracy scores are. So precision and recall and F1 score. F1 score is just um, including both precision and recall. And precision, precision and recall are basically type 1 and type 2 error. So we can see the coefficients of the features for the logistic regression. And we can, um, looking at this um, graph, we see that penalty saved, points per game, and M price in that order was the most the top three most important features. For LDA, we see a very similar um, accuracy score from um, very similar to the logistic regression, and this is because 
they are actually they can actually have very similar results as they're using some kind of linear um, solver and we can see also the decision tree although it didn't have a great um, accuracy score in predicting the position of a player we can see something really interesting here um, as we saw above where the importance of features for position using decision tree so for example threat was a important feature so this can be interpreted as like um, if if this player has a lot of threat obviously he's going to be maybe a midfielder or a forward but if this player does have like has like zero threat then he's probably the goalkeeper so it really is important to figure out if a player is um, a certain position and now we can get to um, my favorite part where we're using the most recent data so this is this is real-time data coming in right now and so the 2020 to 2021 data using the fantasy premier league api and here we get a lot of features so we kind of want to like mimic i mean obviously we should use the same data as we did in the um, second part of this analysis so and we want to use also um make sure the data is consistent with each other so in the beginning um the data set the positions was actually it said midfielder forward goalkeeper so we want to um change that to like mid fwd g, g um gkp to kind of be consistent to our um, training data set before and what we're doing here we're choosing the same features as we did in the um, 2019 and 2020 data set so that we're staying consistent and yeah we're, now we're doing the same process kind of the same process we're seeing um the same thing here like a lot of players don't play that much so we're kind of doing the same thing and i thought that it was appropriate to use 300 minutes because it's kind of halfway through the season right now and i think if you don't have 300 um, minutes under your belt i don't think you should be considered in the data set as it's not really useful information for us to um, predict. So we'll be using players with more than 300 minutes. And we're running through, and we ran through this problem where the data type was object for influence for some reason. So it was pretty easy to just change that to um, a float so that we can look at the, so that we can work with the data better. So kind of changing up the data to, so that we can work with it better here. So now, yeah, after we, um, after we executed this line here, um, can't really see it, but you'll see it in when I post it. You'll see it on my website. But um, now these the influence data type is float sixty four. So now we see that yeah, the minutes, um, a lot of players. I mean, all the players having um, a decent amount of minutes here, four hundred um, above three hundred, like we said, three hundred thirty nine players and twenty columns um no null value so that's good same process as before just looking at data um yeah we see the same poisson distribution which is expected histogram of the players um total points yeah and yeah the same scatter matrix um it's really interesting to see like the relationships between these features so finally we're getting to the part where we're predicting um, using the model in step two and predicting it with our new data. So, so before we labeled that as model, which is the logistic regression um, model that we fit before, and we're predicting it with the new input x. So this is this is the all the um, variables, the features of the new data set. Um, obviously, we don't have um, the the position of the player there because that would be like basically giving the answer to the machine the machine but so we're giving all the x input and then now the model has to predict whether that player is a midfielder goalkeeper or whatever and this is kind of seeing kind of basically showing what is actually happening and th these are the predictions of the um, algorithm so now we see the the accuracy score how well did this model do on the new data set and we see that we get like around 82%, which I think is pretty respectable um, using the data set from 2019 to 2020. This block of code is, I'm trying to 
put side to side um, the predicted and the actual position of the player using the new data set to to see and i'm and i i wanted to show the, the interesting players so i'm sorting by total players total points of this season so far so right now the player with the highest amount of points in fantasy premier league is harry kane with um 142 points with um bruno fernandez coming in second with 140 but you can see how the algorithm predicted their um, positions in this column so this is only the um, 50 rows but you can you can probably see the entire thing if you use this code and the actual position of the um, player so obviously harry kane is a striker forward and the machine learning model predicted forward so that's pretty self um, explanatory and there were, there were actually pretty interesting findings that i thought that okay like i think the machine learning model is in the right here and i'll give you an example so wilfred zaha was labeled as a midfielder f um for the season because i think he did play as a midfielder pre predominantly last season but the machine learning model classified him as a, a forward essentially a striker and it's, i think that's pretty interesting because he actually does play as a striker the um in this season but he was already labeled as a midfielder so with his stats the machine thinks that he's a striker which he actually is in real life but he's labeled as a midfielder in the game so this gives potential for fantasy premier league users to kind of see that okay this player is showing the stats of a forward which means he'll probably score more so and in fantasy premier league you get if you're a midfielder you get re rewarded more points if you score a goal compared to a striker and also defenders if they score a goal that's a lot of points because they're less likely to score a goal so i thought that was really interesting i think a lot of people know that zaha is playing as a striker is pretty it's pretty apparent but it's interesting to see um the results of other players too we can see other examples the machine lear learning model was actually really accurate in producing um in guessing um what their position was and what we can see the case of raheem sterling he is an actual midfielder but he sometimes um i mean in real life too he sometimes plays as a striker or in a forward position and the machine learning model thought he was a forward and one interesting thing that um that i saw that was socek who's a midfielder but he's classified as a forward maybe i did hear about um, how far he gets in to the box and tries to get headers in and tries to score goals and he um, sometimes does and the machine learning model probably thought that he was a forward because of these um, because of his stats that we um, used to train here for like goals scored and using even the metrics of like influence creativity and threat but yeah, we see that most of the, most of the classification was spot on, and the differing ones like there's there's honestly a story to that. Sometimes it could be obviously wrong, like machine learning mo models aren't perfect, um, and especially how I trained it to only the 2019 data set, and I, I obviously could have done more. But I think it was definitely interesting to see how accurate this model was, and we see you see that for now is also a West Ham player. Um, the machine learning model thinks he's a forward but yeah we don't really know but if the machine learning model thinks that they're a forward i don't know that could raise that could you know cause me to um you know go into an investigation into this player oh why is this player um, looked at as a forward why is this player looked at as a defender and it could honestly bring a lot of potential for you to pick your next player to score more points for your fantasy premier league um, that's it for everything and I think that it was really interesting to see the power of machine learning and I I hope that um, I helped you give some insight to to any players that you would want to pick to score more points.